Now, with that introduction to units, what I'd like to do at this point is really zero in on the concept of temperature. And some of you ha may have noticed, if you were paying good attention, that I actually misspelled the word Celsius. I looked online, and unfortunately that's not an uncommon misspelling, but the word Celsius is named after a dead guy named Anders Celsius. Uh, just FYI, there really is a woman that had a unit named after her, and I'd like you to be able to think about that and see if you can find a unit named after a dead woman. Now, in the meantime, we're going to go on and zero our focus in on temperature. Remember we talked about Celsius, which really is a step better than what we typically use, which is Fahrenheit here in the United States. And I would love to shift to the Celsius. It's just a matter, you don't have to do the mathematics. It's a matter of being able to sense what a value means. Um, but we're not there yet. I'm not going to do conversions between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Your thermometers will, me will measure Celsius. And in your calculations, we're going to be dealing with Kelvin. Now, the reason we're going to be doing that is because Celsius, while it's convenient, it's convenient because it's based on the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. It's not a physically meaningful scale. And so we need to move on to a scale that is going to be meaningful in terms of what is occurring at the molecular level. So let's explore this statement in just a little bit more detail. So here I've made a claim. Let me support my claim. Premise one, here's my first thing. Temperature is, this is the definition of temperature, it's a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules. So it's the average kinetic energy. So in the air, the room temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. Not all are moving at the same temperature, if you had kinetic energy here and number of molecules, you would typically see what we call a Boltzmann distribution. And temperature measures the average kinetic energy over that range. Now, hopefully you remember, if you don't, I'm telling you this flat out, kinetic energy is a measure of the energy of motion. So potential is based on position. Kinetic is based on energy of motion. So our kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. You'll do more mathematics of this with this formula in physics. But let's take a look at the magnitude or actually the sign of kinetic energy. Mass cannot be negative. A substance simply can't have a negative mass. Any number squared is positive. What that means is that kinetic energy must be a positive value because neither mass nor velocity squared can be negative numbers. Therefore, and here's the support of my claim, a physically meaningful temperature should never ever be negative. It should start at zero. And that's what Kelvin did for us. Uh, they did some studies and if we measured, say, temperature in degrees C and, I don't know, pressure or volume, some state that we have, they could graph data and come up with the best fit line. Now, if they took that straight line and extrapolated it, and you should know that word extrapolate, okay, that means to extend the slope. So extrapolate the line, it reaches zero at minus 273 degrees Celsius. So what Lord Kelvin said is, well, let's assign minus 273 degrees Celsius to zero Kelvin. Now notice we don't use the degree sign when we're talking about Kelvin. The math here is very straightforward. There's not a you know, strict process that we have to follow. It's simple addition and subtraction. So Celsius to Kelvin. Kelvin is degrees Celsius plus 
273. Now, if my Celsius goes to the 10th or 100th, I like to add the 0.15 there. And I think the key to remember is that Kelvin is always going to be a much larger number than degree Celsius. And if I want to go the opposite direction from a given Kelvin to degree Celsius, I would subtract 273 if my given goes to the ones place, 273.15 if my given goes to either the tenth place or the hundredth. That's typically how I'm going to do my mathematics with this. And this is just showing us that relationship between the two scales. Negative 273 corresponds to zero Kelvin. So now what is zero degrees, aka the boiling point, or excuse me, the freezing point of water, becomes 273 Kelvin. The boiling point of water becomes 373 Kelvin. And now we have a meaningful temperature measurement in terms of temperature relating to that average kinetic energy. And whenever we have temperature in a formula, man, if you're in doubt, convert to Kelvin. Now, there are going to be times, you'll see in just a moment, that we can stay in Celsius. Wow, I'm having spelling errors all over. But man, if you're in doubt, go ahead and convert to Kelvin units for that. So if we take a look at the next problem and fill in the table, we're solving for Kelvin. And Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius, which is minus 167 plus 273. I'm not going to worry about that 0.15 because my original number only goes to the ones place. And if you performed that mathematics, you'd get 106 Kelvin units. Again, no degrees. The next one is also seeking Kelvin as our unknown. So it'd be 1100 plus 273. And our final answer would be 1373 Kelvin. You want to become quite adept at doing these calculations. Our final is actually asking for degrees Celsius, and so we would take Kelvin, we're just solving this for Celsius, it's really the same formula, and we're subtracting 273, and in this case, if I did my math right, we're at 48 degrees Celsius. Now, for the next video, we're going to be working on example 2.2. And I would really like you to try this problem on your, uh, by yourselves. You're going to be calculating a difference in temperature, which is always a final minus an initial. And what I'd like you to do is do this calculation. It's simple. You can do it quickly. Do it first in degrees Celsius, because we have to have the same units for both of those temperatures. Then I want you to calculate it in Kelvin. So very quickly, I bet it's less than two minutes. Do those two quick calculations. And then we'll look at the next video and see what's rather unique about a change. That delta means change in temperature. And just to reiterate, with one exception you're going to come across this year, a change is always a final minus an initial. So good luck, and I hope you see what I'm thinking you will see, which is a little bit of a unique answer for that.